Welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot bot 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 a f diet of pure nostalgia. This is Max Headroom coming to you from 20 minutes into the future. And we are here for Halloween on Retrobot with our My Favorite Monsters spe spe Special. Uh, I, I, I can't do this all night, so let, let's switch over the view here. And uh, and I also can't see my screen in these glasses. So so wait here. Let me just do that. <laughs> you you can't imagine how much setup and preparation it took just to be able to do that. So I I, I hope it was worth it. <laughs> So, welcome everybody to another Friday night Retrobot live stream. Tonight, we are celebrating Halloween, and we are doing my favorite monsters. And by my, I actually mean Monica's favorite monsters. She's gonna show me stuff, and, uh, and we'll see how much I know about it. And we'll show it to you, and then we're just gonna have a whole lot of fun with monsters and stuff and and, and creepy sound effects <laughs> so let's uh let, let's go ahead we've got uh, tonight we've got uh hawks dead and buried <laughs> see it's it's a berry cider and it's buried <laughs> because it's like you know being buried except berries okay i'm done with that so let's go ahead and pour a little bit of that into our creepy halloween glass there we go i i guess i should probably try not to foam it up too much and there we go. We'll leave a little in the can. All right. And with that, let us welcome a toast to Machiavellic. Machiavellic, you've been here for, for like the last hour. So a toast to Machiavellic. A toast to Joy. Joy, you've been here almost as long as Machiavellic. And a, uh, of course, a toast to Colleeny. We're always happy to see you, Colleeny. And Kyoji. Oh, Kyoji. Hey. Always a toast to Kyoji. And Sean. Sean, welcome back, Sean. Happy Halloween. And Nathan. Nathan Fillion is here. Hey, Nathan! Happy Halloween! And Connie! A toast to both of you! Two, two toasts. One Nathan. One Connie. There we go. And it's eerie. It is creepy. And tonight, we are going to look at all of these. Oh, wait. I, I, I don't get to see what they are yet. So... Uh, we we are gonna have all sorts of fun things happening tonight. We're gonna have rewards and consequences. No secret word because uh, because you know what we're we're probably gonna have enough distractions tonight as it is. So with that being said, uh, why don't we go ahead and do see the first our our first entry our first here we go. All right, uh, Retrobot, your your hand, it's uh, unsettling. I feel like you should be eating more. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely be eating more. All right, let's take a look and see what we've got in here. I recognize these containers. We've got our, our, our festive Day of the Dead style bag, which, which is important. And what we've got here are two GoBot monsters. And this is something that, uh, that I really, really love about GoBots, that Transformers has just never really done the same way. Uh, this is something distinctive about GoBots, and that is their willingness to create 
monster vehicles with monster transforms you know so, somewhere in between robots and monsters and, and and that's that's a pretty cool thing that we've got so oh and we we must toast amanda welcome amanda happy halloween and a toast to Cadence and Lyric. Thank you for joining us. Happy Halloween. It's great to have you here. Ah. There we go. And uh, I want to make sure that my creepy hand glass doesn't fall over on my mouse. So we've got a couple of GoBot monsters here. We have uh, we have Pincher here. Let me adjust the light just a little bit so that you can really see and appreciate what we've got going on. This is Pincher. He is a uh, GoBot monster, uh, probably from 1984. And uh, he is part of that big set that we just recently got from, uh, from Half Price Books. And he is sort of a, a bat vehicle. And oh, I got the year right. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, his name is Pincher. He's got pinchers and he's got wings and he's got spiky bits. Uh, he, he's a little bit loosey goosey. Uh, which, you know, is to be expected with a GoBot that is, like, over, like, over 30 years old. So, uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, you know, going on, like, well, I guess around, I don't know, I can't do the math in my head. I've already started drinking the berry stuff. So, uh, so, yeah, we've got the little pincher things that are in the front, the little stabby things, and we've got the claw things, and it does, it does roll. And then we've got this guy, and his name is Egg Beater, and uh, it's because he's got egg beaters for hands. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna own it. I I don't yeah I I his name isn't Egg Beater. Uh, I I don't remember his name. What? I I really don't re remember his name. Bugsy, Bugsy. You know, I'm just gonna say that Creepy looks far more Bugsy than Bugsy does. So uh, so yeah yeah I I remember when we were looking up the info on him because we got him and he's in beautiful shape. I, I mean, his his joints are are nice, and uh, and he's got the cool egg beater. I, I mean, you know, I, I'm imagining these are supposed to be claws, but you know, you're not gonna. There's only so much that they can do with uh, with little tiny claws. If they had gone with bigger claws, like they did with Creepy, and I know they already used that gimmick on Creepy, but you know, it's a good gimmick. I, I'm okay with them doing it more than once. Uh, he is, uh, he is a little bit better if you, if you arch him a little bit, that way he rolls. Uh, let's see, Machiavellic says, uh, in reference to Pincher, Batman says, I gotta go get me one of those. And you know what? It really does look like a, a, a bat, uh, like the bat wing. Uh, <laughs> it absolutely does. So yes, a, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and toast Machiavellic. And, oh, Hope is here. Happy Halloween, Hope. Thank you for joining us. That one was for Machiavellic. This one is for Hope. All right. So now, now that Hope is here, we can really get this party started. All right. So we've got Bugsy and... Uh, yeah, I, like I said, I find that he rolls a lot better if you give him just a little bit of a bend there, and then, then he rolls really well. And it gives him kind of an unusual profile to his vehicle mode. Uh, a lot of the GoBots tend to lie flat when they transform, but uh, but this is uh, this is a case where he is uh, he works better if you you prop him up a little, and then you've got Pincher here. And let's go ahead and do and transform this guy because uh, you know they're both really cool. So uh, you're gonna put the flip these inside the heels here, and then you're going to pivot the legs down. 
and you're going to swivel the arms out. At some point, I'm probably going to uh, tighten those joints, but I, uh, I haven't wanted to just because he's very old and uh, probably a little bit delicate. And then you've got a point of articulation here. Let's go ahead and uh, adjust the focus so that you can really appreciate him in all of his pincheriness. So, so yeah, he, he's he's so little, but he's got so many cool details on him. I mean, he, he the uh, the face is very good. You know, he's got like a bat face, and he looks evil. Uh, and uh, even though you can see a little bit of paint scuff around the uh, the crest of the head here, uh, he's actually in remarkably good shape. Uh, complete pinchers are hard to find because the claws are so thin and delicate. If you force the monster head down without moving it out, you can break the hinge. So yeah, that's uh, that's something that Monica was just letting me know. Um, and yeah, the, he is. These are very t thin pieces. Uh, kind of unusual. Most uh, most Gobot parts aren't this this thin and delicate but uh but there you go uh an excellent robot mode y you know r really really interesting and really cool i love the pinchers i love the way he looks um you know if uh, if i ever got one of these that the claws were broken i would probably uh replace them with uh with claws that are slightly bigger and, uh, and make them in two pieces when I replace that rivet. So uh, Machiavellic says, no, it's because pinchers are the most delicious part. <laughs> and they are. Thank you. Here, yeah. Ah, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, oh, and Tracy is here. Hey, welcome, Tracy. A toast to Tracy for, for coming on right before Halloween. For our spook spectacular, uh, Tracy. If you hang around long enough, we'll do the max headroom thing again. Because because uh, I'm I'm doing uh, I'm I'm max headroom tonight. You can't tell. I took off my shades and I don't have the background running. I don't have the lo-fi camera running. I and there was a lot of setup for max headroom. It was a good gag. I'm telling you, it was a good gag. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. We've got, uh, uh, oh, oh, do I look like Agent Coulson? Okay, I've transformed from Max Headroom into Agent Coulson. So there, there we go. Two costumes in one. In fact, who knows? Maybe they're the same guy. Mm. That's, that's a conspiracy theory. Yes. So that, uh, it's not a correct conspiracy theory, but it is a conspiracy theory. So that is Pincher, and then let's take a look at Bugsy. And, uh, and Bugsy is very cool in his vehicle mode, and he's a lot easier to show because his bits are less floppy. Uh, he looks great. And even though he's mostly monochromatic, uh, the... The little blue accents and the bright, shiny silver bits really, really pop. Uh, he, he is just a neat figure, and he's a lot of fun. And so you've got these, these arm things that are, you know, he's got, like, really good articulation in the shoulder here. And that makes him a, a really interesting in both vehicle mode and in his robot mode, which I can show you right here. So let's uh, go ahead and bend the feet around, and we just pivot at the knees. A pretty common uh, move in a lot of GoBots and Transformers. And then we rotate the body, and once again, a, a common maneuver, but always a nice one. You know, when, when you see the front end of the vehicle just flip around and become the chest of the robot mode, it, it, it's just a solution that, that works really well. And then we take our little head and flip it up. And boom, there he is. There is Bugsy. Now the head does not rotate. It just kind of bobs up and down. He's like, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Listening to the DuckTales theme, uh-huh, uh-huh. Life is like a hurricane, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Okay, that's all we're doing with that. And uh, <laughs> and so, of course, you got that shoulder articulation. And the uh, the ends, I believe, are supposed to represent like little four pinchered claws. But uh, because of the molding, uh, y you get something that kind of looks like an egg beater. And, uh, and honestly, uh, egg beaters are scary. So I'm okay with that. I mean... Can you imagine being chased by a giant vehicle with egg beaters on the front? I mean, that would be horrifying. That would turn your body into soup. So if if he does have egg beaters, if those are in fact just egg beaters, you know what? That's still awful. So yeah, that is that is Bugsy and Pincher to two really really cool gobots and, and you know this is the thing uh, these are the these are the things that people just don't even remember about the gobots line is that, that they had cool figures like these and you would pick them up for like four dollars and and you could have a whole set of really neat little monstry guys to fight with Turbo and Scooter and and Leader One and and uh, honestly, w at that point, wouldn't you kind of want the monsters to win? I mean, let's be honest, because these guys are cool. You know, maybe maybe we've had it all wrong. Maybe Scooter and and Leader One are kind of part in a, of an elitist kind of go with the flow and keep you know keep the establishment at status quo type thing and and the the gobot monsters are looked down on as second second class citizens because they're scary looking and they just want to be treated with respect i guess that makes me the new leader it it, it does not star scream it, it it really does not so uh <laughs> So, it, yeah, you know, there's an untold story of the GoBots. I, I'm telling you. And uh, and they did a, uh, a GoBots comic. IDW did it. And it was done by the same artist that had done their uh, Transformer G.I. Joe's crossover, which looked like a lot of uh, colored pencil drawings. And it, it, and it looked... It looked very much like a children's book. I, th that's the style of that artist, and it's interesting. But I, but I, I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. And uh, and I, I tried to to read the first issue. Yeah, I, I read the first issue. Okay, I didn't try. I did read the first issue, and uh, and it just it just didn't. It, it didn't hook me at all. And and then later I saw the graphic novel, and I was flipping through it. And they, it looked like they kind of tried to tie it into Transformers by the end, but you know, I, I, I just, yeah, I, 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 there's an untold story of the GoBots that's still out there waiting to be told. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll tell it. Uh, Cheeky Cheeky Boy is here. A toast to Cheeky Cheeky Boy. Welcome, happy Halloween, cheeky cheeky boy. I, I lost the, the lit. Oh wait, no, no, it, it managed to not fall. And and so there we go. We can we can put these guys and we got we got these little containers at the dollar store. And they usually come like two to four in a bundle for a buck. And they are the perfect size to store GoBots. So, uh, so yeah, we've been storing our GoBots in these things and uh, it keeps them protected and makes them much easier to sort through. So, let's see. Oh, thank you, creepy-handed RetroBot. You know, ha have you tried some whey protein? Uh, maybe some shakes, um, you know, doing some... <laughs> no, no, not that, not that. So, all right, and this guy, we've got this guy, and um, this guy is, uh, he is, 
I'm going to say, is he one of the guys from, like, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons? Was he... Did, did I get that? Uh, uh, I... Cause, cause I knew, I, I knew. Okay, so Hook Horror from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons by LJN in 1983. I, I didn't know all of that. Okay, I couldn't have told you who he was, but, uh, but uh, I, I, I remembered that that we do have Dungeons and Dragons monsters, and, uh, and in my mind, mentally, I thought, you know what, he. he he, he kind of looks like a Dungeons and Dragons monster. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to the side camera so you can really appreciate the detail. Uh, he's a nice figure. Uh, not, not a lot of articulation. You know, that, that's, that's the, uh, probably the biggest downfall of, of the, this line of figures is there's just not a whole lot of posability here. We, the, the legs and the waist are fused you have uh, you have pieces here, but the the feet don't move. Uh, you can move the arms, and, and that's important. And you can you can move the head, and, and that's important. Uh, you can twist the hooks, and you know what? That's actually really cool because I want to be able to like. Ha Let's see if I can find somebody. Who, who might be a, a good test subject here. I'm going to select a toy completely at random and uh, and we're going to try and see how, how well this can work. Oh, look, what a surprise. It's Wheelie. And so, uh, you know, I could absolutely see uh, him going <laughs> So yeah, I I I, re I have to say that just being able to twist these hooks is really important for this toy, and and it does add a lot of play value. Um, oh, and we've got Savage Shark and Ty Guy. A toast to both of you, Savage Shark and Ty Guy. You came just in time to see Wheelie die. It's a good time. Good time to join. So, yeah, we've got uh, Hooker, Hook, uh, a Hooker. <laughs> he's he's a Dungeons and Dragons Hooker. You know, since the, the adventure ladies are usually clad in, 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 uh, in armored bikinis, then I guess this is what Hookers look like in the <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons universe. Um, and and I do really like the body sculpt. You know, the textures on him are really nice. The uh, the kind of uh, almost reptilian. Uh, it looks like dino skin. You know, like when you saw Land of the Lost and and the dinosaurs that were in there, they had this texture skin, and the spine protruding through is awesome. Uh, I could easily see this figure done uh, done with more modern manufacturing, and I feel like a more modern take on the figure would would have this uh, some some airbrushed white to make it look like the bones are actually protruding through the flesh. Uh, you do have some very nice uh, gradations here in the arms as. Uh, as it goes from flesh to sinew to claw and that's really really awesome so so yeah he, he's a cool guy i wish i could do more with him that that's probably my my biggest thing uh the feet are odd they are a different plastic and manufacturing style than the rest of him and, and yeah it, it's i mean they they look like they're from a different toy and that's a that's a good point. That, that Monica was just commenting on that. Uh, they're also hollow, you know. And of course, he is hollow. You know, you can see that uh, that he was molded in uh, his body was molded in two parts, and this looks like it was chemically bonded together. Uh, it, you know, that seems. 
uh, usually when you uh, when I've seen ultrasonically welded figures or ultrasonically welded parts, it's a much cleaner joint than that. So I'm going to guess that this is some kind of chemical bonding. But yeah, these feet, uh, they they look like the feet from the kids in Where the Wild Things Are. It isn't wasn't that his monster feet? So <laughs> so yeah, he's got Where the Wild Things Are feet. And uh, and a pretty stiff body, but he's capable of gnawing on wheelie, and, and that's really what's important with this guy. So, so yeah, uh, advanced Dungeons and Dragons from LJM, and uh, and I would love to see what what versions of this guy exist on the you know from third party resellers because i bet there's some beautiful beautiful versions he's still cool and uh and that was what 1983 yeah 1983 so uh, i guess i can set that aside and oh retro bots there you go i i i just i want to give you a sandwich pal um yeah all right oh and i I get a prize. I thought I was getting a, uh, another figure to, I wasn't even paying attention. Okay, thank you, Retrobot. So let's see, I get I get a prize. So, okay, let's see. Ooh, ooh, I got like a, a minifigure Grimlock and I got a little pot full of candy Score, yeah. Wait here, let me. Uh, did I lose the little O-ring? I lost. Okay, I have to. I have to go down under here. Wait, wait, wait. Because I think I think you need the O-ring. So there we go. All right, let's let's take a look. Uh, first of all, uh, we we got we got white chocolate Kit Kat. I'm eating that right now because white chocolate Kit Kats are amazing. So there we go. Mmm. 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 Yeah. That is good stuff. And I got a little skull ring. And that's that's important. There we go. So I got my little skull ring that right there. Um wearing it like a boss oh oh does it <laughs> okay yeah we don't want something that makes me look like hitler so uh so it, here's here's what we will do uh, uh maybe i can get it on okay i can get it on my pinky there we go and of course the king of all candy the reese cup Oh, and Tim Kangaroo is here. Hey, welcome back, Tim Kangaroo. Thank you for joining us. Happy Halloween. And uh, we're sporting some Atari Halloween music. Yeah. So, you know, when... When I was growing up, these these weren't in in these kind of a thing. They would be just like wrapped in foil, and and they looked a lot smaller. Um, they now they put them in these, and you kind of expect a little bit of a bigger piece of candy, and you're not going to get the bigger piece of candy. It's still the same size, but that's that was Reese cup, and I was uh, recently telling the people at work how when I was a kid. I would take Reese cups and see my mom would get when she went to the grocery store she would get the big buckets of peanut butter you know like that do they even still have those like like where you you know it was it was no brand name uh it was like half a step up from being a white bucket that said peanut butter on the side but instead it was like a brown bucket that said peanut butter in red print and had some nutritional information, but that was it. Okay, it was you know it wasn't Jif, it wasn't um, Skippy. There aren't really a whole lot of brand names of peanut butter. Uh, but anyway, uh, but it was just this big bucket, and I, and I would take that and I would scoop out a big wad of peanut butter. Pretty much, I imagine a Reese cup 
just covered in an ice cream scoop sized dollop of peanut butter and then I would take my finger and I would slather it around so that you couldn't see the, the Reese cup anymore. It just looked like I had this snowball sized wad of peanut butter and that and oh that was so good. And it was shortly after that that I developed a weight problem. So <laughs> So, let's see. Uh, Ty Guy says, I wonder what the wheelie death count is at this point. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm i not sure. I, I'd have to go back through and figure it out. We should keep track, though, because it's important. Uh, I, I also, you know, I've got, I've got my little Grimlock here. At least that's what it says it is. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know what this is. I, uh, I haven't seen these. So... Is this like one of those little figurine things or? Oh, okay, so here we go. This is a little plastic Grimlock, cartoon accurate Grimlock. So he, he's, he's pretty cool. And uh, Grimlock says, even though we friends, me love to chomp on wheelie. Yeah, chomp, 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 chomp. Wheelie say, um, Ah. See, I didn't do the rhyme there. I just decided to let Grimlock kind of chew him uh, off camera. There, there we go. So, so there we go. We have uh, we have killed Wheelie twice in in one live stream. That, that's good. This this must be a great live stream. Oh, oh, this is a this is big. This is big. Okay, what do we got here? This, oh, I know what this guy is. All right, so this guy's name is Crusher, and I know because this is a toy that Monica has had for most of her life. Yeah, you got this, you know, like e eon, eons ago, like, you know, when you were a small child, like 10 years ago. See, see, I'm implying that she's very young. And, and that, for those of you who aren't married yet, these are the subtle things that you can do to have a happy marriage. So, um, so yes, uh, this is from Monica's childhood, and his name is Crusher. And let me sh let me show. You. So, uh, oh, it is part of an unofficial monsters line that included Gray Gory the Bat and Sucker Man from Mattel in 1979. Okay, see, I didn't know all of that. Uh, so he's got a really cool gimmick, and I wanna make sure that, uh, that I've got it. Okay, yeah, so, so there's this valve on the back, and it's amazing that he still works after all these years. So with Crusher, you crush him. You go, and you can hear the, the air coming out of him. Yeah. And then you you turn the valve, okay, and then he he holds see, he, he stays deformed, and then if you open it, he he opens up. So that there we go. Oh, and you, you can pull him? Oh, the thing pulls out. Oh, okay, so you you squish, you push in. Okay, well. Let's let's try that again. So, squish, push in. Wait here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know this is therapy right here, and then you push it in. Okay, I, I thought it was a T valve. Okay, so, you, you now, see he 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 stays all all crumpled up, and then you pull the thing out, and he goes back to the original shape. That's awesome. And he he is he is just cool. I mean, he is just all kinds of cool. And he seems to have a a, a bit of, you know, a, a little bit of something happening there. Uh yeah, I'm 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 kind of remembering that part of uh of uh what was the movie, the unofficial movie about uh Abraham Sapien? Uh <laughs> The Shape of Water. The Shape of Water, where where she's like, <laughs> so, 
So I, I'm I'm imagining that that's that's what what this is right here. Um, and no, I'm not going to touch it. Okay, Mr. Feel, Mr. Fillion. Yes, I'm not going to touch it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a bit of a nub there, but like I said, I I imagine that it's. So, or wait, she was she was like two fingers. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, he he is, uh, boy, 1979. I mean, that is that's an old toy. That is a really old toy. He is what what, what is that? 41 years old. 41 years old. This is older than my wife. So. <laughs> So, uh, and, and, you know, almost as, as much fun to, to abuse. <laughs> I don't abuse you, I don't think. She, Monica can tell you whether she feels abused or not. It, it depends on my mood, whether I'm being a, uh, a, a shite disur disturber or not. So, you know, you can, because he's so flexible, I, he doesn't have any joints. But because he's so flexible, you can just do anything you want to him, and he can, he could be like, and Wheelie could say, I, I didn't even do it yet. <laughs> um, look, on the rug, give me a hug, and he can be like, no. And, and, you know, he could, you know, body slam wheelie and, and, you know, probably like even put him in his mandibles and be like, nom, 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 nom. and then you can, you know, he, he would, could possibly eat and poop wheelie, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> so I, I hope that Wheelie transforms into car mode before he be, before he comes out because uh, you know his car mode is a little bit of a turd. So just a his car mode is better than his uh, than his robot mode. But still, okay. So yeah, Crusher spelled with a K, and he's got male genitalia. At least the suggestion of it. 1979 was a cool year for toys. So, uh, Sean Shago says, why don't monsters eat ghosts? Because they taste like sheet. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I guess Sean has learned the art of the dad joke. A toast to Sean. They taste like sheet. <laughs> That's a good joke. That that is a good joke, and uh, and and we can actually use it on air. So, all right. Uh, let me hand him back to you. Should I? Should I do? Okay. So this is one that I know about. This is the Kraken. This is the Kraken from Clash of the Titans. Uh, it was, uh, oh, 1980. I, w I was going to say 1979, but uh, I was going to guess 1979. He has four arms on ball joints. They're a little bit loosey-goosey, but, uh, you know, he's, he's from 1980. He's a 40-year-old toy. He pivots at the waist. He will stare at you surly and 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 eat your maidens uh he has he has flippers which uh which originally they uh they kind of snapped in here and uh and would always fall out and uh and the flippers that we had were actually broken in in several places and cracked and they would not stay in and eventually the uh, the whole nubs just crumbled they they just came off and they they wouldn't attach at all so what i did is uh i i, I took the the bottom half here is held together with a couple screws and then it separates in the middle and then i uh, i put the i i hot glued the flippers in place temporarily and filled them with great stuff expanding foam Actually, it wasn't great stuff. It was the Walmart equivalent. So it was pretty good stuff. And, uh, 
and I also took a couple pieces of metal and bent them into a T shape and just put them into you know, like stabbed in from inside here so the T head was inside the body and the rest of the uh, the metal thing went into the flipper and then it filled with that foam filled the body with the foam in each half and then I put it back together and now these things are nice and secure uh, I did some reconstruction back here let's see okay yeah right right here uh, the plastic was completely broken off right here so uh, so I did a little bit of fill in with uh, with super glue cyanoacrylate Mr. Shago and uh, and then uh, the the baking soda technique to uh, to build that up and did a little bit of sculpting and then a little bit of painting and boom he is uh, he is like that he's got this tail piece which just fits on right that right like that and it it creates this joint right here so he is all kinds of awesome and uh, it, yeah you can you can have him be like oh oh I, I'm feeling faint ah and then he can fall onto a fainting couch and I feel like he'd be good at falling onto a fainting couch uh, he, he can he can you know grab grab you know I'll just select somebody at random and let's just say that he grabs oh it's wheelie and he can be like and then then wheelie dies once again that's that's what three four deaths I think we're up to four deaths for wheelie for for one for one live stream uh, the sculpt on this guy is really nice. I mean, he's so big. I, he's just so cool and big. And he just towers over most of the other toys that we have around here. And he he looks like the Clash the the Kraken from Clash of the Titans. You know, he he looks movie accurate. And uh, oh, oh, and you know, he's got. Yeah, you know, he's got the suckers underneath. Yeah, you, know, you can see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna take off the tail because it's hard to to get them close to the can camera. But you can see the suckers underneath, and they they've got that detail underneath here. Uh, he's got spinies on his back, and of course the texture of him, just in general, it, he he kind of looks a lot like like Godzilla. In terms of skin condition, I feel like they both uh, have the same dermatological issues. Um, and yes, that's that's right. I'm standing by that. Uh, <laughs> he, you know, he's he's got some nipples. He's got he's got his little nipples. I, I love this this texture that they've put into the chest and even sculpting. Yeah, you know, the sculpting around the face especially is excellent you know all the folds of skin and the little pitted places he is a cool cool monster and uh quite possibly the coolest monster that that we've got and we've got some cool monsters so so yeah um the kraken we we have released 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 a kraken 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 Oh no! I'm a damsel. Wait, wait. Here, let's uh, let, let's let uh, let RC be. You know, the the maiden that you would be sacrificing. She's tied to a rock because I, I guess they didn't have anything better to do with with maidens in in ancient greek times so she's like oh oh no kraken don't don't eat me and and then uh, weird al rides in on a llama and he plays his magic accordion and he soothes the savage kraken and then they're both like nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. another one rides a bus sir. Eh, eh, eh. Another one rides a bus, uh, and, and you know I could keep going. I really could, but I'm not going to because I respect all of you and I don't want you to leave. So uh, let's go ahead and set aside Lama Yankovic. 
and the Kraken. But he he is just a cool guy. I you know I I, I almost don't want to put him down because he's just so much fun. He's you know he's big, and I love all of the sculpting, the tail, and everything. I know I said I was gonna put him down, and then I started playing with him again. It, it's because he's cool. You, you, you just don't understand. He's cool, and we've got one. And 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 you've had this since your chi since your childhood. This is another one that you've had since your childhood. And uh, you know he he's had his his bumps, but. Uh, but we, we've managed to to put him back into one piece, and he is bigger and better than ever. Okay, he's actually the same size and better than ever. So, so yeah, that is the Kraken from Clash of the Titans. And Savage Shark asks how heavy he is. Um, I don't know his actual weight. Uh, I would say, I'd say that he's maybe a couple pounds. You know, a couple pounds. He is a little bit heavier since I squirted all of that pretty good stuff into the fins and the body. You know, that, that did add a little bit. Not not a whole lot. But I'm going to guess that he's probably a couple pounds. You know, two or three. Something like that. So, yeah, that is... That, that is, uh, is him. And, uh, yeah, the tail is huge. Savage Shark was just saying that the tail is huge. And, uh, and so, yeah, that was, and, uh, and Colleen is apologizing to Machiavellic for something. I, I, I don't know what's going on here. Keep it clean. Colleeny, I'm watching. So, let's see, what's next? What? Oh, what did I do? What did I do? I didn't do anything bad. I, I can't. Is it because I was talking about his nub? That, that was good, clean, Disney-style humor. Uh, sometimes it's treats, sometimes it's tricks. It's the black box. Well, good night, everyone. Have a happy Halloween. Uh, no, no, we're not ending it. We're not ending it. All right, here we go. I'm going to open this. Okay, so we got a little box. Oh, oh no. Oh, uh, here. Uh. I, I've got a box of larvettes. <laughs> that's, that's, that apparently they're, they're barbecued flavor. <laughs> oh, oh boy. I, I, I don't feel like I did anything to deserve this. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Lore Vets, who does that? I mean, who, uh, what kind of marketing team do they have? Oh, they don't get better when you take them out of the box. I'm gonna show these on the side camera. So there, there we go. This is not like, like, things that are made to look like larvae um these are these are little worms <sighs> so um uh, okay i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it and and i'm gonna do it in part because i believe that people do need you know our society needs to get over its plate fright that's a survivor man term. I, I like that term, plate fright. And and look for alternate sources of protein because we've got a, an explosive global population. And and 
bugs outnumber us like gazillions to one. So, uh, Tim Kangaroo says, I prefer my Glingon goth extra squirmy. <laughs> goth is best served live. No, we're not doing that. Just so that you know, like, that is never going to happen on this channel. That is never going to happen on this channel. If, if, if you serve me live larvettes, I'm not doing it. I'm just saying it right now. I'm not doing it. So... Okay, Sean says eat four. Um, he, he, let's let's just okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna start. I'm gonna I'm starting with one just to get the experience down. They're 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 hard, so they're probably crunchy. Okay, so that's. Let's just go ahead and do. Do several, several. Okay, this is several. There's, there's, there's no, no faking this. Just so you know. Oh, there's the flavor. Yeah. Oh, oh. At first, you know, it's the aftertaste. Okay, I've got, I've got to get past the aftertaste. Here we go. You remember that black June bug thing? They taste kind of like that. For those who don't remember the black June bug thing, kind of bitter. Um, I liked the crickets. The crickets or, were the grasshoppers. They were grasshoppers. Uh, the grasshoppers were actually pretty good. Uh, these. These really are not very good. Oh, oh. I do not recommend larvettes. They are really not very good. The, uh, the, the second handful was no better than the first and yet there's just a little bit of kind of a peanuttiness i i used to like peanuts <laughs> oh we've had tarantula on this channel by the way tim kangaroo tim kangaroo said next deep fried tarantula we we've actually had tarantula um I think that the tarantula is actually better tasting than this. Uh, yeah, the taste. Uh, the, the, but it was a freaking tarantula. And you just can't get past its tarantula. -ness. I mean, the legs were fuzzy. Come on. How are you supposed to eat that? All right. Well, um, I, I need to, to imbibe. Ah. Yeah, a toast to larvettes. Ah, oh, yeah, those. Uh, uh, here, you can try some. Yeah, there, there, there we go. So, <laughs> oh, worms. Ah, okay. So we got we got another we got another thing here. Uh, th thank you. All, all right, wait here. Let let's uh, let's do. Like uh, Orkin, yeah. There we go. Nanu, nanu. And what do we have here? We have. Uh, right here, let, let me give you that back. We have this guy. This guy is. Um. Well, let's let, let me before you tell me. Uh, let me tr see if I can, how much I can, I I'm just going to own up to the fact that I don't know what this is off the top of my head. I, I, I okay. No, no, that was true. <laughs> it, 
It, it's it's not a wrong answer. It's absolutely true. I don't know this guy off the top of my head. But let me see how much I can suss out about this guy. So we've got um, we've got some uh, we've got some rivets, and even though his color scheme kind of makes him look like he would be uh, like a dollar store type guy. I don't think that's the case because the uh, the plastic feels substantial, and uh, and he's got a wind up gimmick. Which let's see if it still works. Oh, it does not. That 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 is a shame. Um, yeah, this ju this just turns, and you can sort of get it to. I, I wonder if we could maybe find a wind up mechanism to replace it, but it does not. He's got kind of a skull head thing, and it just. He's got a lot of pegs. He sort of reminds me of a Zoid. Oh, wait a minute, what's this? Okay, so you can do that. Nope, nope, it still doesn't work. Uh, it reminds me of a Zoid. And, uh, and so Zoids, uh, Zoids were Takara, weren't they? Uh, originally, Zoids were Takara. Um, now I'm looking for for uh, maybe some copyright information, but I don't see it. So my guess is that this guy is somebody from around 1983 and, uh, and maybe, maybe like a Hasbro Takara type thing. So uh, that, that's my guess. Uh, what, what is it? Let's see, Slice. It's a Stariors, Stariors from 1985. Well, I already ate the worms. So I don't think that I have to eat anything else gross because I didn't earn those worms. I was pretty good. What are you, why am I getting the... <laughs> What, what is that? What is happening here? When did I lose control? Just because I didn't know the star yours guy. Uh, he, he is kind of cool though. You can take his head off and you can put his head on different places. You can take his limbs and you can do like, you know, you can do stuff like this. Uh, oh, wait here. We can do stuff like that. Yo. So let, let's go ahead and show this on the side camera. He can go, yo. And uh, yeah, you've got the, the legs that come off. So he, he does remind me an awful lot of a Zoid. Um, you know, just in that he comes apart and you've got, you've got a lot of different kinds of things that you can do with his play features. So let, let's, let's do something, something creative here. Um, so we'll, we'll put the, the legs down here and, uh, yeah, we'll put the legs down here like that and we'll, uh, we'll put the arms, let's see, so, so that can sit like that and then we'll put the, the arms there like that and, and you know it's cool that he's pointing he, he's a very positive guy and then we'll take the head and we'll put it right there and you know he, he's like yo yo like I, I, I can I can chop you or I can be like dude dude so yeah he's in a permanent state of dudeness which is uh, in itself pretty cool so yeah, uh, Star Yours is a line that I kind of missed out on. Um, I was already obsessed with Transformers at that point, but uh, but you can see that you know they've got some translucent parts in the head, and there's something going on inside there. It looks like there's actually a Zoid pilot inside there. Um, that is what it looks like, but but it doesn't open. So uh, oh, so I was right. That's a Zoid pilot. So, uh, so yeah, uh, definitely feeling the Zoid vibes. Uh, he's, yeah, it seems that he's got some, uh, kind of a post in there. I wonder if we can get him to, nope, nope, we can't get that to grip on that way. So, which is a shame. 
So, you know, I feel like this guy, this guy would benefit from a little bit more parts, you, you know, more parts. He needs more parts. Like there's, there's, there's not a whole lot that I can do with him because there's only so many ways to do the parts. And also I noticed that they have two different sized pegs. So there are dedicated pegs for head and for legs. What was that? Oh, weapons. Okay, so, and see, that's where if I were the toy designer, I would be like, hey, you know what? Um, everything gets the same size peg. You know, that because then you can really have, have some fun. Um, I, I wish his chest had some pegs, because right now, like, I'm wanting, wanting to put the, uh, the legs on either side like that. You know, do, do kind of a thing like that. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe I could do like a vehicle mode. You know, so, something like this or uh, or maybe wait here. Let's let's do this. Let's take this one here and we'll put this one here. And, you know, and then we'll take the head and do do the head right there. There we go. And now we'll we'll just take the arms and point them backwards like that. And it's like And so he is you know a star of yours and, and his leg came off. So, yeah, um yeah, interesting guy. Uh, you know, skull head, but very friendly and being like, dude, oh yeah, I may have a skull face, but I'm still your bro, dude. So that that's him. Oh, Grayscale and Chill are here. So a toast to Grayscale. And a toast to, ch to Chill. I was thinking about trying to do the last name and I decided against it. So <laughs> it's very small type on my screen. So there, there we go. So yes, he is a starry oars and starry oars are pretty cool. And I imagine that if I had more of these guys and had more of the weapons, then I'd be able to do a lot more with it. You know, it's definitely one of those things that benefits from having the other figures to, to play with. So let's go ahead. I will hand him back. And uh, and what's next? Ooh. Okay. By special request. Oh wait. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh wait here. Thank you. By special request. This is for you, Joy. We have a Rancor. Look at that. You know, say what you want about George Lucas's directing capabilities. He knows how to make a good monster. So this is the Felucian Rancor Star Wars from Force Unleashed from 2008. Uh, yeah, it's obviously not the original Rancor, but uh, but he is just awesome. Look at that guy. I love the blue highlights on him. I mean, that really, really works. The sculpting is beautiful. You can see all of the detail. And, and this, this just shows the evolution of manufacturing and toy making technology when you compare the textures and the detail and the posability of something like this to our Kraken, who also is amazing, but doesn't have near the depth of detail as you get with the Rancor. And he's heavy too. Yeah, he, he, he weighs like probably about mm, three or four pounds. He, yeah, he's, uh, he's got these cool claws that, that, you know, his hands pivot. 
Uh, you could pretty easily get a figure. Let me let me see if I could fit. Oh, somebody. Here we go. So he can absolutely grab wheelie and then lift him up and and then open his his mandible like jaw and then take wheelie and and just getting him to let go of wheelie is a little bit of a trick and then be like and so <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I've decided that that's his voice. His his voice. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, so his head swivels, so he can look at you like, "Hey, what did you mean by that offensive comment?" I'm a I'm a sensitive person. I am a sensitive creature. Why do you look at me only skin deep? I have feelings. Feelings deep in here. Most of my feelings are hunger, but they are still feelings, and they are legitimate. So, he's got a harness. Uh, the harness is really, really cool. And you can uh, you can probably grip that with a Star Wars hand, and so you can have Luke Skywalker ride the Rancor, which is better than killing him. You've got posability on the legs. Yeah, you got the hip articulation. You can swivel the feet, and he's got a little nub tail. Yeah, you know, he's got his tail reminds me of Dudley. <laughs> you know, because it's just a short little tail. I love the armor on the back. Yeah, you know, the the uh, the scales on the back just look terrific. Everything about him looks terrific. Yeah, you know, this is this is a beautiful beautiful toy, and I I don't know how much they go for on the secondary market. Probably about twenty. No, two hundred. Two hundred. Oh, I should be more careful with him. Um. I, I can sort of see why. Oh, look, there's even a little bit of of a, a, a ball. Yeah, that he's got a little bit of a... Well, it's not a knee. Uh, I guess that's kind of an ankle joint, except forward and back. But yeah, so you can put him into all sorts of different poses. He's just really, really cool. The, the Rancor is just awesome. And... Uh, and you know what, Joy? I can easily see why why you would ask for this monster because he he is he is amazing. This is just an amazing monster. I, I love him. I love his teeth. Look at the inside of the mouth. Ah! Wait a minute. Let let's just let's just find out. Uh, oh, it looks like uh, there's liquid that's on the table, but I didn't do it. So so I, I'm I'm okay. J j I know people were worried, but I'm still okay. Uh, <laughs> Monica is frantically trying to sop up stuff. It's getting further in here, so. They're, they're, and, and I'm just going to keep going. And here's the important test. Can Wheelie's car mode fit inside the mouth? Yes. Yes, it absolutely can. He can eat wheelie in car mode. Nom, 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 nom. So, so that, that's important. Yeah, uh, the, the Rancor is, is awesome and excellent. Uh, for him? Oh, okay. Let, let's, so let's, wait a minute here. I feel like we can, we can improve this experience. Okay, so... Uh, we, we've got Wheelie here, and uh, because we love Wheelie, and we're gonna just transform Wheelie because uh, because he needs to be awake for this, and uh, we're gonna go to the side camera. So we've got Wheelie here, and uh, I'm gonna need to adjust the focus. There we go, and then. We've got 
the Rancor here. And, uh, and here we'll slide Wheelie back to right about there. You know what? It's fine if he's laying down. That's fine. And now we're going to see what happens if we put slime in the Rancor's mouth. Well, okay, there we go. Oh, oh, we missed Wheelie. Oh, come on, Rancor. You can do better than that. Oh, here we go. Wait here. Oh, you know, this is an idea that's not, that doesn't seem to be working very well. You know what? We Wheelie missed the slime. Uh, that. Uh, you know, if, if Wheelie managed to avoid that terrible fate, then I'm not going to force it on him. You've earned a brief rip, rip, repass, um, something. Let me get the slime into, into the tub here. There we go. There, well, it's there. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, and... Get some of these little globules. All right, so we, we, we tried, we tried. We tried to slime wheelie and it did not work. So uh, here, here's your slime. There we go. And, and we are, oh, we're getting a prize. I'm getting a prize, I'm getting, cause I was good. Keep it, keep it upright, okay. So, what do we got? Let's, let, let's, here we go. I have been told to handle it carefully. Ooh, okay, okay, so. I will, I will give you this. There we go. And uh, apparently what we have here is Eye of Newt. So, um, what on earth is floating in there? Uh, is that a raspberry? Is that, it looks like a little brain. <laughs> it does look like a little brain, but, uh, but it is not a little brain. It is raspberry. So, all right, so uh, did I just shoot this? Just shoot it? Okay. Don't try. Oh, well, well I don't. Do, do I drink the raspberry? Or do I leave the raspberry in the glass? Okay, I'm gonna leave the raspberry in the glass. There we go. You can tell that I've got a, a, a an extensive history with drinking alcoholic beverages. I really do not. I don't know what I'm doing. So this is an adventure for all of us. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's got some happy in it. Yeah, all right. Well, that that was a treat. Oh, it's warm in my belly. It is warm in my belly. All right, so uh, let, me, let me move the Eye of Newt out of the way. What do we got next? What do we got next? We, we, we're, doing, we're doing so good. I am so good at this. Okay, so, okay, thank you, creepy retrobot hand. Oh, okay, I know this guy. This is a Wave 2 Decepticon Headmaster called Squeeze Play. This is him in robot mode. And uh, you can see that by this time they've simplified the uh, the headmaster gimmick that has the, uh, the the tech specs that appear on the chest by just making it one piece. Uh, the the original wave headmasters had three different status bars. So depending on which head you put in, the the stats would change. It was a cool gimmick, but it's not something that really. 
that, that you really used a lot in, in play. Uh, and, and so you also, the original headmasters had, uh, ha had more bits. This guy is just, uh, well, let's go ahead and show him on the other camera. So we can show, there he is. And you can see it, that's just two pieces. Um, not the most impressive figure, but it's, it's fine. It, you know, it is what it is. And he folds to become the head. And then he also can go into a, uh, a pilot section. And of course, when, uh, when you take him out, then the, uh, the tech specs are no longer there. But see, it's all just one thing. Now, what's interesting is that if you look at the, if you look at his thing, well, yeah, it's just got the one tab. Yeah, I thought that they had three different lengths, but I think that these are, no, they are three different lengths. I think that you might be able to put this into an original headmaster and still get different specs even though for for the later models it's only driven by this one central post so so that's kind of a cool thing um but you know you're not here for the robot mode you are here for the creature mode so that's what we want to give you uh with this guy you're going to flip in the the hands here and then we're going to take the arms and fold them this way. And he's, he's actually got a passenger compartment somewhere around here. Let me see. Well, let, let's go ahead and put his, his legs like that. And we're going to flip that around so that the legs become arms for the monster. And then we take the claws of the feet and turn them into pinchers. And we flip down the head just like that. And then, ah, his, his uh, pilot compartment is here in his belly, uh, which, which is kind of hard to access here. Let's, let's do that. So we now take, take this guy and we can put him in here. There we go, and he goes inside there. And then you take his little blaster thingy, his conspicuously tail-looking blaster thingy, and you flip up the post and just plug it into the headmaster port, and that makes his tail, and that makes squeeze play! And, and, and he's very cool. Uh, there's really no gun storage for the other gun, this is not the original gun that came with him. This is the one for Pretender Classic Starscream. I, I'm pretty sure that we have the gun, but um, we, we haven't figured out which one it is. So so there he is. He's cool. Uh, you know, his, once again, uh, I, and I know that I've made this point in past live streams, but when you've got creature transformers, it's all about the creature mode. And this guy, for a Gen 1 figure, you've got, uh, you've got the arms that, that move and they have a, a, an elbow joint and they've got these pincher things that actually work. Uh, and and that's, that's important. He would be greatly improved if I could move the legs. You know, the, the fact that his legs don't move that uh, that there's no way to move the shoulders out. And, and that's something that they just didn't do a lot of in the Gen 1 era. So it is a product of its time, but if they were to remake this guy, I guarantee that this monster mode would be fully articulated. And if it wasn't, then I would get online and do a live stream and whine about it. So that's important. Uh, nonetheless, as a Gen 1 creature, monster, transformer, he is really cool. And, uh, and he absolutely would be able to grab Wheelie and here we can do stuff like that and be like, <laughs> Oh, 
or maybe it, actually I'm thinking, uh, 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 you know, the uh, the Tuscan Raider thing. So, oh, tag team. So yeah, he can hold him up like that, and then and then Hooker Hooker can be like, uh, oh, the day's not drab. Wheelie got stabbed, and so and now now I'm wearing a witch hat. So yeah, we've got we've got Hooker and uh, Squeeze play teaming up to stab Wheelie in his neither regions, and that that makes for a good day. And I'll just keep keep wearing wearing the hat. Got the hat, so digging the hat. There we go. And uh, and I will hand you Squeeze play. There we go. And uh, did, wait, we need we need a max headroom moment. I think since wait here, let me let me do this because you know there's a bunch of people that signed on after, so we have to we have to do this correctly. We have the the shades and we have so oh oh I must have bumped did I bump something because. Because my view, I must have bumped something. There we go. There we go. All so for those of you who did not see the entrance to this video, 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 this, this is 20 minutes into the future. Does anybody even remember me? Hello, anybody? I've been lost to the ages. Go ahead, try to find my TV show. Try and find it. You can't. No, tap, tap again because I wasn't on camera. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Retrobot. Thank you. So that's our, uh, that, that's our Max Headroom view. Because, you know, if I, if, I, if I get the witch's hat, then, then I obviously get, also get to play Max Headroom. And... And that's that's what we're doing tonight. So, all right. So there there we go. Uh, <laughs> so let's see what do we got next? What do we? We're, we're going through a lot of stuff. We got we got we got monsters. Okay, another big one, but light, very light. What do we got in here? Oh. A little bit of a curveball. Okay. Well, what we have here, let's give you that back. We have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna attach the stand here so that uh, so that she can stand up. Maybe. Well, this is. Uh, this is a Monster High figure, and uh, oh, I'm trying to remember her name. Don't tell me yet, okay? Um, I want to say it's like Skella something, but uh, you know she's got a Day of the Dead motif, and uh, and oh gosh, I just cannot remember her name. Uh, Skeleta, Skeleta. Calveras from 2012 Monster High. Uh, the only part that I got right was that it was some kind of Skella name, which, you know, of course it's going to be, and that she's Monster High. Uh, I, I'm a fan. Uh, you know, not, not, well, okay, let me, I, I guess I can't really say that I'm a fan in the sense that I don't follow monster high but monica has had a number of the monster high dolls and i remember even when they first came out uh, i saw them in the store and they caught my eye as being really really impressive and, and that's that's the thing um let me go ahead and put this on the other camera uh, what oh that her belt is getting shoved up by the uh by by the Okay, here we go. So we, we've got this stand here so that she can stand up, and it's really hard to get her into it because she's got a little bit of badonka donk. Yeah, she she's got a little bit of uh, of creature bum. 
Uh, is it Bone Donk a Donk? <laughs> bone Donk a Donk. You wouldn't expect her to have have Bone Donk a Donk, but she does. So she's got some bone. I'm sorry, Monica made me do it. So, so yeah, this this is Skeleta. Is that what we said the name was, Skeleta? And uh, and uh, here we can adjust the stand. Let me put her on the the side camera here. So, wow, we gotta adjust things. There, there we go. And. You know the the biggest problem with with fashion dolls is that they in the package the hair is done perfectly and then as soon as you take it out and start messing with it the hair becomes a frizzled mess and I have uh, I have never spent any time learning how to do the hair on fashion dolls but that being said uh, the detail that they put the loving detail that they put into these figures is just phenomenal. The uh, let, let me go ahead and turn, put this back on the main camera. Uh, hers is actually pretty good. My friend Cat Whitney sent me their doll. Oh, so th is this Cat Whitney's? Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Cat Whitney. Uh, this she is. She's just such a cool figure. I I, I remember. When, when Monica saw this and the sculpting on the bones is really well done. Uh, just impressive. The detail on the clothing is fantastic. The, the, the patterns on the clothing and really when you see all the intricate detail on the face. Here, you know, focus on the face camera. There you go. So look at that. I mean, she's beautiful. That, that, that's the thing about these dolls. They are just beautiful. And so much care is put into each and every one to make them distinctive and make them memorable. And their clothes reflect their personalities. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually a, a great, I think it's fair to say that I'm a great admirer. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm not a fan because I don't follow it, but I am an admirer of Monster High and everything that they've accomplished with their toys and with their line. And, and also, I, uh, I really like the, the message behind them, the idea of, of no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, it's okay. You know, be yourself, be a monster. I, I think that that's a fantastic message for, uh, to, to be teaching all young people, not just little girls, but, but, uh, I probably could have used that message myself when I was growing up. I, I know it might come as a shock to some of you, but when I was growing up, I was considered a nerd. Things have changed so much. <laughs> Like I, I couldn't pull it off. I couldn't pull it off. <laughs> oh, but still, uh, yeah, I, 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 I love the Monster High dolls are fantastic, and they're all. I, I don't think that they've made any bad Monster High dolls. Um, I, I, yeah, I remember the dragon one. Oh, she was cool. I forget what her name was, but she was really cool looking. All the gold bits and the scaly bits. Oh my gosh, she was neat. Uh, Jennifer Long. And so, yeah, um, Monster High, very awesome. You know, we, we, haven't, we haven't had any toys that I've thought sucked. Let's see. Oh, show her suitcase. Okay, so she has a suitcase. You know, she, yeah, Monica did include the suitcase, and so she's got her suitcase, and it's got this little handle, and of course it looks kind of like a coffin, but it's like a Day of the Dead coffin, so that is really, really neat. Uh, I, I can't help but feel like the Monster High emblem reminds me of Hello Kitty. <laughs> it does. Uh, let, let's go to head to the side camera so that you can see the detail a little bit more clearly. And, uh, and it does open, 
So, you know, you've got the molded pouches inside, the, the quilted texture inside, uh, the handle recesses to form a spinal column. So there we go. Yeah, that's it's a spinal column handle. So yeah, this this is yeah. Once again, they've tailored the accessories to the character. It's not just hey, we're gonna have a generic doll that that is the same for every doll, and we're just gonna vary up the colors. And they have some standard accessories. They're making everything character driven you know really going along with the theme of each and every character and there's a ton of characters so so yeah and i honestly this goes back to something else that i've said about transformers for a long time is that i feel like at this point with the transformers line they could be doing more than just having robots with weapons you know i want to see accessories normal accessories that the characters in that universe would interact with i want to see brainstorm's briefcase as an accessory i want to see like maybe a mini con that turns into a microscope for perceptor i want to see uh blur's bar as a play set you know all this stuff there's, there's so many things that don't just revolve around things that either stab or shoot that they could be incorporating into these toys because at this point the line has grown well beyond just being a, a line for little boys that, with robots that fight. So, uh, of course, I'm old, but, but yeah, and, and that's something that I feel like Monster High does already so why is it that toys for little girls are are made with with a more expansive universe and a more expansive play value than toys for boys i mean do they think that boys aren't smart enough or aren't well okay we we we, we don't advance quickly so uh yes she she is very cool so, there we go. Um, Ty Guy says, Now that I'm older, I find myself wondering why designers feel the need to give every female character breasts. Would it be nice to see more variety just from a perspective of different body types? And I agree with you, Ty Guy. Thank you. A toast to Ty Guy for pointing out that not every female character has to have the stereotypical, stereotypical model body type. And I agree with you. I want to see all sorts of different body styles represented in both girls and boys toys. So yeah, absolutely. A toast to Thai guy for having a very astute observation and one that I agree wholeheartedly with. You know, like, like I was saying during my live stream with uh, with RC, I, I feel like one of the reasons why we keep getting toys where she's got an entire car folded up on her back is because the designers are too obsessed with trying to make her look like Princess Leia in a bikini and not focusing on trying to make a really good transforming toy. So... But enough about that. What, what is next? Okay, we got another big bag. Another big bag. Thank you, Retrobot. Oh, I know what this is. Here you go. This is a sectar and I'm glad that the camera is getting it in focus that is really cool and, and see these are actually like a puppet here let me show you this guy's name uh, is uh, tr Tracula 
Tracula and Trank or something like that. Uh, Skulk and Trankula. So, and these are Sectars. And, yeah, he, oh, look at that. La, 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 la. Yeah, 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 yeah. <coughs> me, 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 me. I'm Henry the Eighth, I am. Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before, and everyone was an Henry. Henry wouldn't have a willy or a Sam. No, sir. I'm her eighth old husband named Henry. Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. Henry the Eighth, I am. Second first, same as the first. So, uh. <laughs> Oh, come on! Everybody's wanted to do that! Okay, I'm the only person who ever wanted to do that. So, uh, this is, this is cool. And what I love about this is how, how lifelike the, the creature is when, when you've got your hand in here and, and, you know, he's just like, you know, you can freak out your mom with this. You, you could absolutely be, you know, be like, oh, mom, look, look, I got this toy. And then, be like, ah, and she'd be, she'd, she'd poop herself. Yeah, if you, if you, if you want your mom to have feces in her underwear, then you do that. And it's just like, ah, so, so yeah, the, uh, the figure riding on works really, really well. Uh, you know, he's holding himself on there. And he looks great, and I love the design too. You know, you've got the uh, the bug eyes and and the mandibles and everything, and you can open and close the jaw with the with the puppet action. And then you know his face is also very very tarantula esque. He's got he yeah. You know, let me show. Let me go ahead and show this in the other camera, but I have to take him off of my hand. Snug fit. Because I guess they intended it for uh, for a smaller hand than mine, but here I'm going to put it on this hand. That way I can get him over to the other camera. So side camera, there we go, and point down camera, there there we go. So sectars, yeah. There we go. So and. You know, just the the fuzziness and everything, and and you know, I've I've eaten things that look like that, so so that's pretty cool. You can see the uh, the texture on the back of the figure, and the iridescent paint looks fantastic. Uh, you know, he's very very shiny. He looks like he's got an exoskeleton. And, and then the, the antennas on the figure and the fact that the antennas are still intact. You know, that, that's impressive. The color is, is awesome. This is a cool thing. And, uh, and I feel like this is one of those toys that was just maybe a little bit too high concept for a lot of toy buyers. Because I, I don't know that, uh, that these were as successful as they probably should have been but uh but yeah this is this is just a cool cool thing and so sectars yeah 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 hmm. near far near far you know when when you have a puppet I mean, you, you can't not do it. You just can't not do it. I'm, I'm going to, so here, I should take this off. <laughs> uh, let, let's take a look at the figure just because, you know, he does have a figure. I mean, it's all about the creature. Let, let's just own that, that the, the figure, it's great that it has a figure and it's a nicely designed figure, but the truth about it is I don't care about the figure. I care about the creature. I, and and it's a shame because this is a this is a nice figure. He's got you know he's got shoulder rotation. Uh, he's got neat grippy claw hands. He he's got ball joints in his hips. 
which which make him good in to be able to ride the guys and then he can also stand up sort of stand up there there we go let's and uh he's got knee joints he's uh and so you know he can turn his head so for a 1985 was this 1985 so oh 1984 uh a really beautiful figure especially for a 1984 figure um could be a little bit more poseable but honestly the articulation on this figure is pretty good especially when compared to other toys of the time like he-man that you know were yeah you know i mean he-man's great but not a whole lot of uh not a lot of po posability. Joy says it's weird that they were made by Coleco. Um, Coleco, you know, I, I had a Coleco vision when I was a kid. I'm trying to think of what else Coleco was. In. Coleco did Cabbage Patch dolls. Um, and didn't Coleco do Cabbage Patch dolls? I want to say that Coleco did P Cabbage Patch dolls. Uh, and. You know, obviously they had the Coleco Vision, which was uh, for at least a little while. It was probably one of the uh, the biggest competitors with the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Uh, in fact, it was probably one of the reasons why why Atari moved on to the Atari Fifty Two Hundred because uh, they made a an adapter for the Twenty Six Hundred or for the ColecoVision that allowed it to play Twenty Six Hundred games, and so the Atari Fifty Two Hundred came out with much better graphics and sound effects and cartridges that would not work with that adapter. So, um, the, oh, they also did Starcom. So, uh, wasn't that another one of those things sort of like, like you could interact with the TV or something? That was Captain Power. But I thought that there were two of those kinds of, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But nonetheless, uh, so yes. Uh, and I guess, uh, I, I guess the thing is that if you don't want to wear your toy, like the being able to play with a bunch of these monsters at the same time would be difficult because when it, you know, when your hand's not in there, it's it's just cl cloth. You can't put it into cool poses. And maybe that's one of the, people didn't know how to play with it. I, I think that that's, that's what hurt this toy line. People just didn't know how, how to interact with it. So kind of got off on a segue there but uh, but that's what we do we 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 segue so uh machiavellic says speaking of the figure it really looks like a mix mix of masters of the universe and power rangers type look he would have been a favorite of mine if he'd come out when i was six and, and yeah i i think that you're you're dead on the nose there the uh the action figure really does look like a uh like a um a, a power rangers villain and yet his his articulation and his assembly does kind of hearken to masters of the universe and of course the creature themes so yeah i i i would agree with that uh a toast to machiavellic for astute observations So, um, and Tim Kangaroo says, I have the original Coleco controllers. And, you know, I, I read reviews that were pooping all over the, the ColecoVision controllers. And I, I had the ColecoVision. I used the controller and, and I was fine with it. But I guess, you know, you, you get good at using whatever system you grew up with. I did not grow up with a Nintendo, like an NES. And to this day, I'm not very good on a gamepad because you know i'm old now and learning new things is hard so what do we got we got the small bag okay uh, thank you retrobot oh okay okay here we go here we go we got another one of these and you know what that means that means that we've got a gobot 
And since tonight's theme is monsters, it's going to be a monster gobot. And it is going to be a monster gobot by the name of side camera Scorp. This is Scorp. And he's cool. Once again, the Gobot monsters are cool. How many times do I have to say it? The Gobot monsters are just such a neat concept and so distinctly different than what they were doing in the Transformers line at the exact same time. The uh, Now, I will say that Scorp needs pinchers. He needs pinchers. Uh, these, these, I know that they're supposed to represent pinchers, uh, they look more like like knives or something. Uh, I, I want him to have... And I, I go back to Creepy all the time. Creepy had such great pincher things. And and I, I, I understand that they didn't necessarily want to keep doing the same thing over and over. But, uh, but they absolutely could have done, done, you know, just different styles of pinchers that that were still in that you know mechanically the same opening and closing and and oversized that's so cool and and you just you, you just can't beat that uh machiavellic says side camera sounds like a good gobot name it, it does side camera thank you side uh, uh, oh leader one it's not me it's scooter no, I, I, I'm sorry. I should never pull out a scooter impression during any live stream ever. Uh, Savage Shark says, I freaking love those tank tread feet. Yes! Thank you, Savage Shark. A toast to Shav Savage Shark. I'm starting to slur my words. Toast to Sh Savage Shark. And yes, he's got tank tread feet. I mean, that's cool. That's something that Transformers didn't do until Beast Machines with tank or. And, and and it's so cool. They're, they're just they look great. And and he's got he's got posability here. He's got knee joints. He's got ankle joints. He's got an elbow joint. He's got arm joints. All of these points of articulation. And you look at the transformers that were coming out at the same time, and th they just didn't. Most of them didn't. And so, so, and this isn't even a super GoBot. This is just, you know, this would have been at their three or four dollar price point. So, so that's really, really impressive. Just a really neat design. And I will say that as much as I, as I, I'm, I, I, I'm irritated that these pinchers aren't real pinchers. Uh, he's he does have a good design aesthetic you know he's he's very angular and faceted and and these style pinchers do carry that design aesthetic over i love the little details of like the the whatever these little nub things are on his sides and and the texture on the leg here and yeah th these kind of armor looking things on the feet uh, you can see it again on the tail here. You know, there's a lot of intricate detail that's been put into this figure. And, and he's just, you know, he's really cool to look at. You, you look at the head and, uh, you know, like most GoBots, he doesn't have an expressive head. It's not a human looking face, but, uh, but it's nonetheless a really nicely sculpted face. And, uh, and very distinctive. And then he has a V on his chest because he's a fan of Voltron. So uh, so let's go ahead and transform this guy. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna do stuff here. I'm, I'm trying to remember how he goes. So uh, he doesn't transform. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, he does transform and if I remember correctly, you have to get the feet around here and then you do this sort of a thing. And uh, let's, there, there's, there's, a, there's a chest component here that I need to, to figure out how to pivot. And I wanna be gentle with him because I really don't wanna break him. There we go, okay, so you push on the top of the head here and then that pulls out the creature head and I wish the mouth opened 
and I understand I'm being picky at this point because he is he he's like a 1984 85 Gobot, and uh, and he's got more points of articulation than most transforming robot toys of that time period. So I I. I he doesn't need to have an opening and closing mouth. He doesn't need to have opening and closing pinchers. Yet, I want him to have an opening and closing mouth. And so, here is his vehicle mode. And it is cool. Look at that. That That is just neat. You can flip that forward so that he can blast things with his tail. And, uh, you know, you put it down like this. And he rolls around. And if he had pinchers, he could pick up guys and grip them and be like, yeah, but, you know, he can't do any of those things because he can't open his mouth and he can't open his pinchers. So, you know, I, I'm uh, these these criticisms are made with love. This is a cool toy, but I just wish that I had this exact same toy exactly as it is, except with an opening and closing mouth and opening and closing pinchers. And I think that, you know what? As we continue to expand our GoBot collection, I've decided I'm going to get a second Scorp. And I'm going to get a second Bugsy. And I'm going to get a second... You know, all these monster guys that need some of these extra little embellishments, I'm going to do it. I'm going to uh, to add those, those bits. And I am going to give them those extra little bits that will take them from from here to here that 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 is going to happen and and I'll, and I'll show it on on this channel because that that kind of needs to happen nonetheless this is this is this is a really cool vehicle and uh and he looks awesome it's a cool creature it's you know it, it's not quite that's the thing that i really like about these they're not quite a vehicle mode. They're not quite a creature mode. They're a monstrous vehicle mode. And, and that's really, really cool. Ty Guy says the alligator clip type mechanism for the claws. Yes! Thank you! Thank you! A absolutely! An alligator clip for, you know, or something similar to that for uh, for the pinchers that would be great and and it would already be chrome i mean i could actually just use those with a little bit of kit bashing you know a, t a toast a toast that was tie guy right yeah t a toast to tie guy for really good ideas <sighs> so there we go uh that that is scorp and i just want to show him off a little bit because i really like this mode uh, yeah, he looks so neat, and, and he, he's such an interesting thing, and you have him next to, like, well, let's just, let's just compare this, this uh, vehicle mode, and uh, I'm going to choose an, another character completely at random. There we go. So, you know, compare this to this. I mean, yeah, I don't hate this vehicle mode. I will give Wheelie his due. This is this is kind of cool and futuristic in in a, a little bit of a turd way. But uh but uh but you know, look at this. This is this is just so much cooler on so many levels. And I really wish that his mouth opened. You know, that that like if the if like this the whole top of the head just opened up like a cockpit but also like a mouth, that would be awesome. So he eats his driver. He eat he eats his driver and then the driver is never heard from again. That's that's what happens with Scorp. So, yeah, uh, love Scorp. Scorp is cool. If if any of you are into GoBots and you have the opportunity to get Scorp, um, you want him because you know if if you are if you do collect GoBots, uh, Scorp is kind of a must-have. And, and I really love the transform. 
uh, you know, he it's it's just nice and solid. His robot mode is very solid. He doesn't have a whole lot of loosey goosiness, and everything just fits very nicely together. So he's a very very cool figure. So yes, that that is definitely one of my favorite monsters. So let's see. Oh, Osaka Jack is here. Well, uh, and he says that he loves the suit. So, does anybody mind if I if I if I do the thing? Because I, I don't know if Osaka Jack's gonna get this reference because only old people would get this reference. But uh, there we go. That, see how well that worked. Uh, so I modified the glasses. So these are from the dollar store, and I put little screws in here, and then I modified my glasses to have some some little holes and they just kind of lock in just just like this and so that well you know it worked the first time and now i'm struggling with it because because i because i had to i had to show i i had to like show off what i did there we go we'll get that to click into there and then we'll get this to click into there there we go okay so uh, so, that's right, Osaka Jack. This is Max Headroom bringing you Retrobot. Bot, bot, bot. This is Max Headroom bringing you Retrobot. We're talking about toys and things from time when I was on television and drinking c -c coke Not the drug, the soft drink. So that that's my that that's my Max Hedron thing. So there we go. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I loved Max Headroom when I was a kid. Like, like just the whole concept of Max Headroom. And you know, looking back on some of the clips, he was way over my head. L like he he was he was making references that I did not get. And and probably only get some of them now because you know it was it was actually much smarter than it probably had any right to be, um, and uh, and I feel like it's one of those things. Uh, but anyway, a toast to Osaka Jack. Welcome, Osaka Jack, and uh, happy Halloween. I'm gonna have to freshen my. There we go. This is uh, so we got the oh, the hawks uh, dead and buried. See, it's it's spelled like buried. I already did this. So, so there we go. Ooh. What? What? No! No! I had to eat worms. I I I. No! I didn't I didn't do I didn't do anything bad! Tell them internet! Tell her that I didn't do anything bad! Tell Retrobot that I didn't do anything bad! I don't deserve the black box! I don't wanna open the t t t tell everybody that 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 yeah anybody know about the Chicago Max Headroom broadcast signal from 1987? Heck yeah I do! So so in that in 1987 somebody hijacked the airwaves and then somebody in a rubber max headroom mask with a sheet of what looked like corrugated steel or aluminum or galvanized steel uh behind them kind of going back and forth and then then he you know the it, i think there was a kid in the mask uh it was during an episode of doctor who the horror of black rock Okay, so thank you. Yeah, and and then yeah, it see, I get the impression that it was a little kid in the mask because they were pretty much laughing the whole time, and then they held up like a can of Coke, and and, and then uh, then I think they mooned the camera, and and yeah, I'm just gonna point out Max Headroom doesn't actually have arms, so uh, so he couldn't have picked up the can of Coke. Uh, the thing was, he was making reference to politics. And a news broadcaster, so maybe an adult or a teen. Uh, I'm thinking, well, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I read somewhere that somebody who had claimed to do it, 
w- said that it was him and his younger brother. And so, you know, that that may be it. And so since we've kind of gotten past that, let's just go ahead. Okay, okay. We're going to... I don't want to open the box. I don't want to open the box. The last time it was worms, and they did not taste good. Yeah, you know, I'm not giving you your rubber O-ring back. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh! Oh! comes in the foil bag oh I already saw what it is <laughs> it's an armor tail scorpion it's it's it says armor tail scorpions like it, it has an s like there's more than one I don't want to eat an armor-tailed scorpion. Uh, I guess I. Let's. Uh, I guess I need the. Let's see. Uh, there's scissors right in front of you. Okay. Oh wait! I I don't need to cut it. I the it is. I don't want to eat this. I I, I don't want to. <laughs> Okay. Wait, wait, you know, it just looks like a silica packet. You're not supposed to eat silica pasket packets. Paskets. I just said paskets. Uh, here, I'll give you these back. I don't need these. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Let's. So. So we got. Okay, we got that. It's smaller than I expected. And, oh, there, yes, there are two of them. One has a broken tail. Okay, so, um, yes, yes. And I'm being reminded that Survivor Man really likes scorpions. He makes them look good. And whenever I'm watching, I I think, you know, he actually, he does a good job of making that stuff look good. So, um, let's... I'm going to take out the little silica packet. Like, this isn't dipping sauce, is it? No, no, I don't think that this is dipping sauce. So, here we go. We've got, we've got scorpions. There's two of them in there. That's two of them. All right. Les Stroud, this is for you. This is... This is for Survivor, man. Okay, I've got two scorpions. Let's, let's go ahead and make sure that everybody gets a good view of, of the scorpions because the longer I take to do this, the longer it is between now and when I have to do this. <laughs> that's, that's them. That's, that's two little scorpions. Oh, oh there's his tail. And so, yeah, that, that's, okay. The way that, uh, that Les Stroud would do this is he would just, he would just like pop it in his mouth and start crunching. So here we go. Here, th- this is happening. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Just pop it in there. Uh, 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 um, there's a little hint of the same flavor, but not as bad, not as strong. Yeah. Um, a little bit chewy. I expected them to be a little bit more crunchy. There, there's Christmas, you know, they've got, they've got the 
the crispy outer shell, but still kind of chewy. A little bit of an aftertaste. Okay. I have now eaten scorpions. Two of them. I ate both of them. Monica doesn't even get to try the scorpions. So. Okay. Yes. We have eaten scorpions. And so now, scorp beware, because as soon as I learn to eat nuts, bolts, and rivets, then then y you are in danger. Uh, they, they weren't that bad. Uh, I, I, I feel like... I, I don't know if there was any kind of flavor on that. Was was there any kind of flavor? Was it just... It's just a dried scorp... It's scorpion flavored. It, it's... This is a scorpion flavored scorpion. Uh, so... Yeah, I, I feel like if it had had some kind of seasoning, it, it would have been a little bit better. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, the, the, not, not, not as bad as, as you might think. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I wasn't digging the worms, which is a shame because I know that like worms is something that, that people who are into this like raise to eat and, and boy, oh boy, you got to do something about that, that flavor. Uh, it, cause it's, well, yeah. But the scorpions is not as bad. The scorpions are not as bad. The worms were worse. So, all right. Uh, oh, oh, and Mac, you, so uh, uh, crocodile. Yes, you're telling Machiavelli that crocodile is good. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 didn't, did I try the truck? Yeah, I tried the crocodile. It tasted like chicken. And, and yeah, a fishy chicken. Yeah, uh, chicken of the sea. Apple of the medicine cabinet. So, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, Retrobot. Uh, th th thank you. Thank you. Okay. And... Oh! Okay! Okay, we got... This is a whole bowl. This is a whole bowl. Full of battle beasts. Look at those. I didn't know we had battle beasts. We got battle beasts. Look at these guys. Oh, this the battle beasts are like a sister line to the Transformers. And uh, and where you can really see the influences on these rub signs that are the same size and same technology as the rub signs that were on Gen 1 Transformers. I don't know if these still work. I'm going to try and make this go. But uh, but okay, so this guy you might be able to see. Let me get him in focus. So, uh, you can see that it's water, okay? It, it's hard to tell. Let me get... You can see how, how beat up my thumbs are. I, I, ha, I abuse my fingers. Okay, so there. that He's got the water symbol. So, he, he's water. And I think water beats fire. And then this guy has no symbol at all, which makes him the... Uh, the most uh, the the most powerful guy um oh yeah see how powerful he is um and then we got this guy um oh um so let's see uh the we got sir sire horse cutthroat cuttlefish pillaging polar bear blitzkrieg bat i guess i'm holding blitzkrieg bat Killer fish and triple threat snake, and so let's see. Uh, he, did, you know, I would have thought that that would have. Uh, I I can't tell what it is. I think it might be another water, and he doesn't have a symbol, and uh, he doesn't have a symbol, and uh, this guy is a Decepticon. No, he's fire. So, so yeah. Uh, these guys, so it's going to be hard to show these here. I'm going to give you this ball back. Okay, there we go. And so I'll tell you what, the, this guy is holding a rubber chicken, and I don't think that that's his original weapon, but, but I like it. Um, 
you know, they're they're you know, obviously we got uh, we got a repaint here. You know, the 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 horse guy and uh, you know two horse guys. No, no. Oh, oh, one's a polar bear. Wait, he's not a direct repaint. His armor's a little bit different. He looks he looks similar, but uh, let me get him in focus. They're just uh, it's hard to focus, especially the white guy. He he, the the whites are hard. Uh, so yeah, that that is. Some cool sculptings, you know, creatures in armor. And what these guys remind me a lot of is the Pretenders, the original Decepticon Pretenders. All of these guys, they just, you know, this guy especially, he looks like, I, I think Finback was the name of, uh, of the Decepticons, the Pretender that was like a fish guy. Um, you know, he, he's got... He's got something happening here. He's he's very excited to be part of this team, and uh, and then you know this guy looks a, a lot like one of the Seacons. Yeah, def definitely getting some Seacon vibes here, and uh, and this uh, this I know is triple threat uh, because he's got three snake heads. But uh, so Battle Beasts was uh, was actually kind of. Let's see. Battle Beast was Hasbro Takara 1986. And the idea was that they they all had these different rub stickers, which I bet we could get replacement rub stickers online. And we should do that. Um, and you, you'd have like fire, water, and probably earth. And I believe that, uh, that fire beats earth, uh, water beats fire, and... Oh, oh, wood, fire, and water. So wood beats water because it, it would it would float or, I guess, like trees feed off of water. So trees eat water, and then fire eats trees, and then water it's eats fire. fire. Yes, yes. So, yes, that's how it works. So, um, and so... You'd have these figures, and they'd be randomly assigned these little stickers, and then you could, you know, fight them with your friends and stuff like that. And you know, it's essentially a rocks, paper, scissors mechanic, that uh, that uh, that was kind of a neat little thing. They're very collectible. Uh, let, this guy dropped his sword, so so yeah, they're, you know, having they're uh, they kind of remind me in some ways of muscle things. Um, what was that? Joy, jo jo what joy? Some it's, I'm getting I'm getting messages from my producer. Oh, Joy was just saying that they remind her of muscle things. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Oh yeah. Joy. Okay. A and you know what? A toast to Joy because yeah, we are we are on the same wavelength. So yeah, they uh, my 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 camera is up higher than than these things, so it's kind of hard to get keep them in focus. But uh, but yeah, these uh, these these are cool little little action figures, and what I like is that they still have movable limbs. You know, they're not just chunks of plastic. There's not a lot of articulation, but they've got little weapons. And uh, and they've got some point, so some arm motion here, and really for something that's so small, and uh, and yeah, you know, they're solid. They're they're not they're not uh, hollow plastic. They are solid rubber. Uh, so, you know, there's there's not a whole lot that you need in terms of articulation for these guys. So, uh, and, and I especially respect his choice of weapon with the rubber chicken. That's just really cool. So yeah, and uh, you know what? We could put, we could just include Grimlock here, and we just need to give him a rub sign, and then they all can be battle beasts. Uh, I think that Grimlock makes a good battle beast. So, so let's go ahead, and I will give you these back. Oh 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 oh! And we've got this is very light. Very light. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is obviously a battle beast. 
And uh, this this is triple threat. We just saw him. So, uh, okay. Uh, let's. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Retrobot. So let, let's go ahead and put these put these guys side by side. So I guess this is kind of uh, it looks like an upgraded version of Triple Threat, uh, Triple Threat Snake Imaginex Blind Bag series from Fisher Price 2018. So uh, I how does that work? Uh, do, does Hasbro own Imaginex? Let's see. Let, let's go ahead and. Or, uh, manufactured for Mattel. Mattel? How did Mattel? Mattel and Hasbro are like top competitors. So, well, yeah, but if you look on the. So, um, I, I was just looking on the package. Here, let, let me. Uh, so, uh, on the back of the package, it's got some, some copyright information, and it says copyright 2018 Mattel that's that's really so obviously Mattel owns Fisher Price Mattel I think is the largest toy company in the world so you know like it seems like Hasbro owns everything but everything that Hasbro doesn't own Mattel does own and they and they are fierce competitors so how if Battle Beast was originally Takara Hasbro did I I just I don't understand somebody bought something um, so and Machiavelli says I mean there's the Imaginex Power Rangers even though uh, it, Power Rangers is now a Hasbro license so I, I guess it's possible that somebody just sold the licensing rights to Imaginex and you know but yeah I don't know how that stuff works I would love to know I would I, I would love to know how all of this stuff like flip flops between companies and stuff like that. So nonetheless, uh, this seems to be kind of an upgraded version of Triple Threat, and uh, and he he's got his you know a little bit of an a different staff weapon. Although honestly, I feel like that weapon is more threatening. Uh, I, this. I guess this is like a, yeah, it's actually like a snake handler's tool. So he can do that right here. He, he can, he can do that to, to his other self and, and, and stuff. Um, he's, let's see if the, if it's got any kind of a rub. I'm not sure that it does. Nope. No rub. It's just a black box, which come on guys, you know, e even just like put a, put a symbol in there. Yeah, even if you kind of make it look ghosted out or something like they did when they did the uh, the Transformers clones recently and they didn't have rub signs, but they made it look like they had rub signs. So that's uh, that's him. He doesn't have like like you've got uh, you've got both of the legs fused together and they can do this and the arms can move like this. The head does not move. Uh, so he's he's a little bit bigger. And he's got a little bit more posability. Um, you know, definitely, definitely a nicer mold. Definitely a nicer mold. But, but I have to say that I think, I think I, I prefer the original Battle Beast to the Imagine X ones. You know, I mean, this guy's cool. There, there's, there's nothing wrong with him. But the, the big head, the big feet, the big hands... Um, he, he's, uh, oh, let, let me see. Uh, so they, they, I guess they have muscle things. Imagine X is getting muscle things and battle beasts. That's funny. That is funny. And I guess it fits for Imagine X because their stuff is just like larger versions of muscle things and, uh, and the, uh, the beast, uh, you know the battle beasts because they are just solid molded rubber and uh and the detail is good uh you know i like the mold uh it, it's yeah it, it looks nice but i i don't feel like i would be compelled to collect these whereas i kind of just wish i had a bucket filled with these 
you, you know, like, like just, a, just a, don't, don't sort them. They just have to be in a, in a pile that you can dump on your sister's head and then laugh and run away. Uh, you know, that's, why does it always go back to abusing my sister? <laughs> I do have a sister and I love her. Uh, although, uh, although I don't think that either of us really understand the other. So, so, you know, I, I probably would be inclined even now to, to dump a bucket of battle beasts on her, on her head. And she would be like, I just, okay. And, and that, that, that would be, she just wouldn't get it. So, um, yeah, uh, nonetheless, imagine X triple threat. Battle Beast, Triple Threat. It's very cool that we get to see see the evolution of the design, but but I kind of feel like you know, I'm I'm giving this guy the nod. Yeah, don't feel bad. You're still okay, but I, I give this guy the nod. So uh, let's see, Battle Brawlers. Oh oh, you're just you're that you were prepping stuff. Well, okay, I'm gonna use my psychic powers. Uh this thing that I'm getting. <laughs> I think it might be a Battle Brawlers. Oh my gosh, it is. Did you know that this is called Battle Brawlers? <laughs> okay, so Battle Brawlers are cool. And they didn't get very far. But there were two different guys, and I only know this because Monica was talking about this. There are two different versions of this, you know, of the Battle Brawlers. There's this guy who has this action. Are you ready for this? So he's got this long, this long chain thing that's attached to the back of his helmet. And you press the button on his belt... Isn't that awesome? I mean, look at that. Here, wait, let me do it again. So, uh, let, let, well, wait, I don't want to damage my camera, but, but at the same time, I, I kind of want to, want to show this. Okay. So you, you ready? <laughs> so yes, it does that. It, 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 it bludgeons you with its head tail. It bucks its head forward and bludgeons its enemy with this with this beautifully designed club thing. Let's do that again. <laughs> oh, I hope I don't break my camera. Uh, it, it's so cool. What a great gimmick. He's he's got posable horns and he's got arms that go like this and the rest of the body is pretty much solid but it doesn't matter because he looks like that and then he goes like that <laughs> so <laughs> so and, and so here's the thing there was another guy a, another figure in this series that had some kind of kind of action uh, and the, these were from Kenner in 1986. And so the, uh, the way, oh, crack arm was the other guy. And so what the other guy would do is when you pressed his button, his, his, I guess his arms would go boom like that. And they would, they would hit the horns and then yeah. Yeah, that would happen. So eat, and then he had a button on his head that if you clonked him on the top of the head, his arms would fall off. So you had these two figures that were specifically engineered to fight each other. So yes, um, amazing, just amazing gimmick. Probably, I mean, the guys who, who created these and made them work, pr brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And, and I'm guessing that, unfortunately, it just didn't have, like, there's not a lot of variety there. 
You know, you have two guys that are specifically engineered to fight with each other. And I, I didn't you tell me that they had planned a third one, but it never came out. And, uh, and that probably just wasn't enough for toy buyers in 1986 that are used to buying into a universe of toys and characters. You know, the idea of a product line of two guys that just fight, um, you know, it's rock'em sock'em robots, except you have to buy it one robot at a time. So... So I, I kind of get why it didn't end up taking off, but it's so cool because he does this. <laughs> I, I am I am being patiently reminded that I probably shouldn't club my camera with my battle brawler. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, that is really cool. And you can see him pretty clearly here. The camera actually does want to focus in on him. Uh, the detail on the monster is great. I, I, I love the hands. The hands are great. Let, let's go ahead and go to the side camera. Because you need to see... Look at the detail that they put into this. There's so much love poured into this. You know, he's got techno-organic flesh. And, and he's got grippy claws. And, you know, he's, he's just all kinds of awesome. So, you know, it's a shame that this product line didn't take off because, because this is a cool toy. This is a really cool toy. And it's a lot of fun. And I wonder how much it hurts to get hit in the head with this. Let's find out. Ow. Oh. It it does kind of hurt, um, especially if you don't have a whole lot of hair, uh, which which I don't. And for Max Headroom, I've just kind of pushed it all back as far as it'll go, which is pretty far. Uh, so, you know, let's see. We have this. So what you don't do is you don't, like, have a staring contest with him because if you do, he might go like that. And, and club you right in the temple with with his with his club tail helmet thing it's a it's a, it's a head tail uh, I, I I don't I don't know I wonder if he could like headbutt me and club me with the tail at the same time let's let's find out right here oh wow that's <laughs> I'm not sure that this is a safe toy. <laughs> it, it really clonks. So, yeah, that's Battle Beast. <laughs> Am I getting a red spot where, where I've been clonking myself? Oh, yeah, I do. I've been, I have injured myself. <laughs> okay, that, uh, that did not pass the safety tests. <laughs> I guess they, they just assumed that, that people weren't dumb enough. Oh, I get a present. I, I get a present. That's good. I, I was good. I ate the scorpions. Uh, so, let's see. What do we have here? It, it feels weighty. Oh! Oh, that's great! I've got dead man's brains! That That's awesome. And, uh... And a fork for my dead man's brains. Let, let me give you this back. Yes, we've got a whole pile of dead man's brains, and uh, and they, they look scrumptious. I feel like there's room in the world for pasta that's specifically designed to look gross, yeah, you know, like worms, and I, we should have that. Like, Chef Boyardee should make zombie pasta, although Chef Boyardee is gross. Yeah, I mean, it, ugh. So, yeah, I'll, I'll have some brains, especially since I've had booze and I've had candy. Oh, and bugs. Let's not forget that I've had arachnids and, and worms. So, goth is best served live. I feel like they could use some uh, amniotic fluid or something. But, yeah, 
Dead man's brains. All right. So. We have another one. We have another one. All right. And this feels weighty. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah. This is legitimately one of my favorite monsters so let's just let, let let's go ahead i'm gonna put it on on, on the side camera and adjust things because you need to see it in all its glory it's zod the gobot monster zod this is just such a cool toy and uh and if only I had a, a small transforming robot figure to to uh, to show you how Zod works with. Oh look, it's Wheelie. Okay, so we've got Wheelie here, and uh, and I'm just gonna put Zod back here, and I'm gonna show you how this works. So you press the button on Zod's back. <laughs> And, uh, and he destroys everything in his path. And if you have the power lance, then you can deactivate him. That, I love Zod. Zod is one of my favorite toys. This is, so, what you have to understand is that uh, it was it was Tonka that imported Machine Robo, right? So so Tonka imports Machine Robo as, uh, as as their line of transforming robot toys, and they do that in 1983, which was months before Hasbro did the same thing with with Takara and and the uh, the. Oh, oh, Machiavellic says why? <laughs> so Machiavellic is quoting Wheelie, why does the universe hate me? Waspinator says, first time. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my Waspinator, by the way. So, uh, so uh, before, before Hasbro went to Takara and started importing the toys from the Diaclone line and the Microchange line to create Transformers, Tonka was already importing because because essentially what happened is toy makers in the United States were were seeing the robot revolution that had happened all all over Japan and and so there's all these cool robot toys that are out there all at the same time and it's one of those things where it was only a matter of time before American toy manufacturers and distributors start seeing this stuff and saying, oh, oh, we, we need this. Our children need this. Our children need to get this from us. And, and so it was going to happen. And, uh, and so uh, Tonka was doing it with, uh, with the, uh, which I believe was Bandai. Machine Robo was from Bandai. But to augment the uh, the GoBots toys, you know, the, the the Machine Robo toys, Tonka also designed some of their own toys to supplement the line. Things like the GoBot Command Center, things like Thruster, and things like Zod, the GoBot Monster. And while a lot of those things look you know, look very different in terms of manufacturing and style um, I feel like Zod even though he is very atypical for the machine Robo line is a is kind of a high point of the stuff that they came up with uh, they also did scales Another GoBot monster, which, okay, uh, I guess we were going to do scales, so we've got scales right here. 
and they also produced scales and scales has a cool feature i don't know if we're going to be able well you know i'm just not going to be able to let it roll off the table so scales is a race car it's obviously giant in in proportion to the other GoBots, and I don't know how that works from a storytelling perspective, but what you would do is, and then you press this button, and it takes off, and then it transforms into scales, and it chases your, you know, it, it chases your toys, and, uh, and so that is scales. And this is my scales from when I was a kid. And, uh, and I always really liked scales. I thought he was cool. I didn't understand how the giant race car aspect was supposed to work from a, to from a storytelling standpoint. But it didn't matter because he was a lizard monster that goes... Nyah! And uh, so Savage Shark says, I always thought of Scales as Crasher's pet. You know what? That, yes, I absolutely could see Scales as Crasher's pet. A, uh, a toast to Savage Shark. So, so we had Scales and we had Zod and just look at him. He is just neat. You know, consider the manufacturing of of nineteen eighty four, and and how you, you know you didn't have nearly as as intricate of of engineering, but he looks cool. And while he's you know he's mostly uh, one piece, he's got he's got the snapping feature, and. I'm amazed that it works. I'm amazed. Okay, now, admittedly, I did have to fix this uh, a couple months ago, which uh, some of you were on that live stream. I just turned on the cameras and and decided to uh, take them apart and see what was wrong and, and fix them on camera, which was cool. That was the first Retrobot live stream. Oh, well, that's a little bit of history. Yes, so... Zod has a, a real place in my heart because yeah, that was our first live stream uh, as Retrobot. So, uh, so yeah, he very violently snaps, and and you saw the way that he, he rears up, and you know you get those rare opportunities when he rears up high enough to hit the belly button, and uh, he literally has a belly button. He is a monster that has a button in his belly. It is a literal belly button. And, uh, but the thing that, that, one of the things that I really like about this is not just the fantastic engineering and the violent mechanical action that works tremendously well, but the fact that they had this, this mechanic that fit into the story of what they were trying to tell that the characters you know that he had this weak spot that uh on his belly this one vulnerable spot that you had to you had to somehow get but of course he was he was rolling at you and snapping at you and it's like you don't want to be right in front of him and try and and stab him in the belly that so so you know a lot of thought was put into this, and uh, I guess I can give you this back. Uh, and and the way that it works is really really good. Come on up here, buddy. M Dudley has decided to come up, and he's he's on my footstool, and he usually gets on my lap. You want up here? Do you want up here? You can. You can get up here. Yeah. You're thinking about it. You're doing it. He's doing it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and look, there is Dudley's tail. And so there, there is Dudley. Yeah. Oh, precious kitty. He says, Daddy, what why have you why are you just sitting there talking to the camera? Oh, sweet kitty. He's my friend. He's such a good friend. 
I love this cat. So that's Dudley. So, so yeah, um, love Zod, love Zod, and uh, and I, you know that, and you know I. Th this is one of the things that I think about when when Transformers fans are typically kind of talking crap on Gobots, and it's like, hey, you know what? Transformers didn't have a Zod. Transformers didn't have any of those those Gobot monsters. These are things that make the Gobots distinctive and worth remembering and worth kind of giving some some props to. So, yeah. Zod, Scales, two Gobot monsters that, uh, that I'm really glad to own both of them. They're just awesome. So, uh, I guess I'll, I'll hand you that back. And I'll hand you that back. And uh, we just recently got the Power Lance because uh, uh, we've we've had Zod for a long time, but we never had this, the Power Lance. We got that just for this live stream, didn't we? So so that's important. And I've got a Dudley on my lap. So oh, we've still got stuff. Okay. Let's see. It's it's heavy. It's big. It's big. Oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. It is. Inhumanoids. Inhumanoids. The evil that lies within. That's uh, that's Metlar thing is singing the Inhumanoid song, and and Metlar has a lot of reason to sing the Inhumanoids song because the Inhumanoids was one of the rare, uh, rare properties where it was named after the bad guys because they understood that you didn't give a crap about the, the human figures in their oversized exosuits and little heads and you couldn't take them out of the exosuits and so their play value is kind of eh. You cared about Metlar, you cared about Tendril, you cared about Decompose, and I didn't have any of the the Inhumanoids, but that didn't mean that I wasn't aware of them and think that they were cool, but also I felt like the story was a little bit bleak because, I mean, I'm sorry, I saw the, the, the guys that, that were fighting these guys, and it's like, oh, they would not stand a chance. Uh, the, the Inhumanoids would would get to the surface and they would just kill everyone. That that is that is what would happen if the Inhumanoids uh, story actually took place in real life. They they the bad guys would win. So uh, so yeah, Metlar, uh, you can see he is imposing. He is big. He's just big. He's got like a translucent. Lava rock pointer horn on his head and two little horns and he just looks mean. You know, he he's he, he when he when he stares at you down, you know that he's thinking about your eminent demise. He kind of looks like a rancor. Yeah, he de yeah, there's definitely some some rancor influence. You look at these guys and I mean, they are they are second cousins to each other. He's like, "How are you doing, Metlar?" He's, uh, "I'm doing all right. I've just been at the center of the Earth, you know, as usual. I'd like to go to the surface, but every time I go, it's like, oh, somebody tries to shoot me with a hook or something, and then I have to go. Up oh yeah, I've got the same problem." Last time I went around humans, they stuck a bone in my mouth and then killed me with a gate. It was very depressing. Oh, yeah, that, that is... Yeah, let's go have a beer. Yes, let's go have beer. We're going to have a beer. So that's... <laughs> so that's... Uh, that is Metlar. He, he was the leader of the Inhumanoids. And... Uh, he was he was characterized as having a short temper he could spit lava and apparently he was vulnerable to magnetic attacks which would make sense you know the earth's core is iron 
and and so you know if he's if he's spitting lava he probably has a lot of iron in him but i would but i would think that that would mean that these scales are probably like naturally occurring iron and uh and that would make him really really hard to hurt uh you know i, I would think that that missiles and ballistic attacks would just bounce off of him and uh and so yeah you look at his back uh yeah he's a nicely sculpted figure uh you know not, the the detail isn't amazing like it was with the rancor but he's just so big and intimidating and you know they even tied in since this was a hasbro property they even tied it in with gi joe i think that one of the uh one of the earth core guys was actually like a, a, a sky striker pilot and so and, and you know they made it a point to kind of tie those origins together so i could absolutely see you know if you had some of these guys and you didn't bother with the human guys that's okay because you can have them fight gi joe what would be better than that other than the fact that your gi joe guys would die you know that that's how it would work uh so savage shark says can we take a moment and appreciate a grown man playing with his toys and using modern era antics uh you know what uh, i can appreciate anybody who's willing to appreciate a grown guy who's taking his toys and using modern era antics so thank you savage shark and ty guy says Truly an award-winning performance. Well, thank you, Ty Guy. I, you know what? I, I, I couldn't do it without you guys. It, it, if you guys weren't here, then, then my performance would be. Oh, here's, here's Metlar. He's, he's an inhumanoid, and I can, I can see that he's. He's apparently very angry about something. I, I wonder if it's about his dental work. As you can see, he hasn't taken care of these translucent teeth that are obviously bothering him. So, yeah, that, that's, that's what it would be like if you guys weren't here. So, so, thank you for keeping me on my toes and giving me some cool stuff to talk about. So, that is Metlar. He's awesome. And, you know, I, I, I need, we need humanoids back. You know what? I wasn't going to do this this time. <laughs> but I need everybody to just back away from their screens. Just, <laughs> just for a moment. I, it, it won't be long. It won't be long. Okay. Hasbro. Hasbro. C come here. Come no, it's not going to be bad. I know I yell at you sometimes. But look at this. This is Metlar. You, you know him. Okay. You know him. Let's 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 bring back Metlar and the Inhumanoids, and let's roll them into the Hasbro expanded universe. We want IDW comic books. We want big fat toys with more articulation, and we want to see them fighting Transformers and GI Joe. Okay. Uh, or did you take notes? I didn't see you taking notes, Hasbro. Get out. Get, no, don't don't show me your phone. Okay, you're you're not actually taking notes. You're just looking at Twitter. Okay, okay. Go go back. Go back. Go back. Okay. Everybody else can come back. All right. We're, just a little moment with with Hasbro. There we go. And then we've got one more. Uno Mas. Uno Mas. One more, okay. And hey, Wheelie, I, I noticed that Metlar didn't hurt you in any way. Uh, really sees that he's relieved. Right, thank you, Wheelie. So, okay, this is uh, another big bag. Here we go. And what do we got? Oh! Oh, snap! Okay, this, this is pretty cool. All right, this is cool. Here, I'll give you the bag back. So, what we have here, this, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, this is, I, you know, I could recognize that it was the alien queen 
and her her egg sack play set. And uh, this is the Alien Queen Hive play set, Aliens by Kenner from 1994. And so there we have, look at that. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this in the other camera because this is this is pretty cool. So this is the aliens equivalent of the He-Man slime pit. That that is what it is, and you know it's hard to improve on the He-Man slime pit, but I feel like they really did. You can see that the alien queen can disconnect her butt from the egg sac, and, and that's important. Um, uh, in fact, I'm just going to leave her disconnected. Uh, the alien queen seems to have high heeled shoes. I, I and I I realize that she's a sexy lady. But, uh, but haven't we talked about this? Uh, oh, H.R. Geiger. <laughs> so, yeah, it's an H.R. Geiger thing. I mean, these are, these are actually high-heeled shoes. That's, that's so bizarre. I, they're, they're not even, like, just part of her. She is literally wearing high-heeled shoes. That, that's weird. Okay, that's just weird. H.R. Geiger had issues. He was a brilliant artist, but he definitely had issues. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she's got all sorts of points of articulation. Uh, she now getting her to stand on her own is is kind of tricky. She's got four arms. She's got this amazing tail. Uh, she's got spiky, spiny backs. I mean. This is a fantastic toy in its own right. And we haven't even gotten to the slimy part. So look at that. She, her, you know, the detail on this is just amazing. Just amazing. Uh, I, I, I wish she had the little proboscis thing in the mouth. But, you know, you can't have everything. We're already getting the slime pit. Uh, oh, oh, I got, I got her to, to stand. Okay, so... And she is using her high-heeled shoes, so that's that's something kind of cool. Let's just put her put her off to the to the back here, and now let's look at at this. So this is her egg sack playset, their her hive playset, and uh, well, hello there, Dudders. Dudders is uh, so. Dudley keeps looking up at me lovingly like why aren't you paying more attention to me I, I'm sorry Dudley it, 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 we're on the last toy it'll be okay it'll be okay yeah he, he's down here yeah oh yeah you like an ear scratch he likes an ear scratch so there we go uh, it, it's it's a little Dudley timeout and and he's he's doing that thing yeah see Oh, what a good kitty. What a nice kitty. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the stuff. Okay. Shake it off. Shake it off, buddy. <laughs> oh, I can't resist Dudley. He, he is such, such an adorable, loving cat. And so, anyway, going back to Alien Slime Pit... Uh, it it moves so you've got your your slime catching area here and you've got the little top here and if only we had someone <laughs> yeah, we we know we know where this is going right we, we all know where this is going at this point if only we had someone I'll pick a toy at completely at random <laughs> Oh look, it's Wheelie. So we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna set Wheelie. Wheelie, why don't you just lay in there? It'll be fine. You'll be fine. And then we take our uh, our slime and we just pour it into the top here. There we go. And we can close the lid. And then uh, there's this little lever right here. And uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's... 
Wheelie, it looks like you're having a bad day, pal. Uh, we, Wheelie would like to know the time. Wheelie doesn't want to get slimed. I, I don't know. I, yo, here we go. Oh, yo, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. It's... It's like... F right on the... Right on the gingerly spot. And, and ooh, okay, well, that's... Oh, wait, wait, there's... There, there's a second wave coming. So, here we go. There we go. Let's, let's just try and adjust the position slightly. Oh, here, here it is. Here it is. Maybe any time now. I think we need to add a little bit of water to the slime. I feel like the slime is, is a little bit overly viscous. You can do it. You can do it. There, there, there it is. There it is. Here, get, no, no, no. Don't stay in, stay in the little dish. Stay in the little dish. Stay, stay in the little dish. The little dish. There's a little dish there. Just, just keep the slime. We might have added too much slime. There's more slime. That's, <laughs> um, uh, you know, it, it's just a bad day to be wheelie. <laughs> it's, here we go. W one more dollop. Th this is going to be the end. Anytime now. You know, uh, an interesting fact about slime. Uh, I don't really have an interesting fact about slime. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, to, get, to get this to happen. Oh, oh, we're almost there. Oh, and Entertainer 13 is here. Wait, uh, I will do a toast in just a minute because it looks like Wheelie's about to get the last of it. Here, here we go. Uh, yes, yes, maybe. Yes, no, maybe. We, we definitely added too much slime. <laughs> oh, poor Wheelie. You know what? Here, I'm just going to help this along. There, there, we, there we go. And... Oh, that's that that's that's great. That that <laughs> All right, there we go. And we're just going to close that off. So these are uh poor Wheelie. I, I think that Wheelie has has taken a few for the team tonight. And uh, yeah, we're we're going to we're going to give him a break for the rest of the evening. <laughs> So, uh, Entertainer13, hey, thank you for showing up. I'm sorry that, that you missed out on most of the shenanigans, but a toast to Entertainer13. And that is the end of my Dead and Buried. And, uh, and so I think that is the the end of our my favorite monsters i hope you guys had fun with this i had fun with this monster toys you know monsters are cool and that's the thing you know monsters and creatures are just cool and they're fun and getting them to interact with each other is as much fun as getting them to interact with all of your other toys and so if there's any toy manufacturers out there, we want to see more monsters. And uh, and so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little uh, my hats off to Wheelie for being such a good sport. And uh, and thank you to all of you for showing up on a Friday night and just spending the evening going through old toys and having fun with them. So. Um, Thank you. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, I, we, we need we need the music. We gotta do the music. We 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 can't do the thank yous without the music. Okay, okay. That that's what we're gonna do. Thank you, Machiavellic. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Kyoji. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Amanda. 
Thank you, Cadence and Lyric. Thank you, Hope. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Cheeky Cheeky Boy. Thank you, Savage Shark. Thank you, Ty Guy. Thank you, Tim Kangaroo. Grayscale, Chill, Osaka Jack, and Entertainer 13. Thank you all so much for showing up. It just wouldn't be the same without you guys. You are the best group that has ever attended any live stream in the history of live streams. Thank you so much. We are going to be, uh, let's see, what, what do we have coming up? Uh, uh, oh, yes, we have we have a whole big box of GoBots, and we're going to show them off next week. So that's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I, I, don't know if we, I don't know what else we've got on the agenda. So just keep an eye on the Twitters, and you know what? If you know anybody else that you want to invite along, we're still trying to grow, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Maybe click the thumbs ups, because that's that kind of stuff helps us in our endeavors to continue growing and being able to do this kind of stuff because it's fun. So thank you so much, everybody. I really, really do appreciate it. It, it, it just wouldn't be the same without any of you. So have a wonderful evening. And, uh, and can, can I get a Max Headroom sign off? Yeah, because we, we, we need to have a Max Headroom sign off. So... Are, are, are we there? Yes, we are there. So, so thank you everyone for attending Channel 4, 20 minutes into the future. That's that's really all, all I remember. And Coke, catch the wave. Don't say the P word. So, yes, there we go. All right, so that, that's it. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a... Have a happy Halloween, be safe, and, uh, and we will see you next week. Have a wonderful evening.